H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I will start with some basic PPT. Uh, maybe just small introduction, why Salesforce is important, what is the history behind it. And then we will start with the log, how to log in in Salesforce and how to start with that we'll do today. Let me share my screen. So before, before jumping into Salesforce, we just need to know why uh, why Salesforce is right now in the current market and what is the significance. Uh, I just need to give a very basic introduction. So in earlier days, uh, what we used to do, like maintain a database, okay? Like where we used to store the data. So in the mid 20s, we had mainframe, the big computers and all, they had to maintain so many things and it was provided by the IBM. So that was huge. Then from the big, big computer, I'll, uh, then we have started doing the client server architecture at the late 20s. It's because one computer acts as a client and another big computer or big storage used to work as a server. But the problem is in that you just need to like send the data from one machine to another machine and it takes a lot of time. And uh, because of that, if somehow, the server computer have some issue, then the entire system will be down. So even that was a problem for us. So, and uh, in the 21st century, what we have, we have the on-demand. What is the significance of on-demand? So on-demand is nothing but in another term, it's a cloud technology. You know, everyone aware about the cloud computing. So cloud computing is the latest technology and you think about any online uh, application. Could be Facebook, could be Google, could be Amazon. Everything is right now in the cloud computing generation and it's an on demand. So Salesforce also one of the tool which started this uh, provided as a CRM uh, services being a cloud computing technology. So it became very famous in short time. And uh, at that point of time when Salesforce was introduced, it was the only company, only CRM company that was providing the cloud computing features. So it became a very popular, very short time, period of time. So what is the reason behind one demand is very much successful and not like their earlier generation? It is because you don't need to, um, you don't need to pay extra cost for maintaining its server or um, you don't have any fear that if, if any time the server is down, the entire system will be down. Because right now everything in the cloud, you just need one computer or even even your right now you think about your mobile devices you just need one device and internet connection and that's it you don't need to download any software you don't need to uh, go to particular uh, uh, licensing part and everything you just need to go to a particular url provide your username password and that's it you can just use their software part their platform part if they have some UI, also everything. So it became uh, very easy for every, for the customer. So <clears throat> Salesforce is basically a CRM tool. So that point of time, um, because it's uh, like uh, cloud computing, it became famous. So what is CRM? So you just need to understand what sales, why we need Salesforce, right? Everyone aware that Salesforce is a good, very good technology, but is it used in all the places? What is the reason behind it? So as I told you, Salesforce is a popular CRM tool. Okay. <clears throat> and reason behind Salesforce become famous because it's low cost, low risk and cloud based solution. And it's based on the multi-tenant architecture. I will come to this architecture a little later. So let me start with what is CRM tool. <clears throat> This is a little bit important that why you are using Salesforce. Okay. So CRM means it's the customer relationship management. 
so you can think about your suppose a company uh, a tech company uh, they are providing some um, they are providing many products you can think about a big uh, manufacturing company a laptop company a mobile company uh, think about apple okay so they are selling their devices to their customers now this has to be done through some online portal uh, again some people should uh, promote their uh, products like that and then after that what happens and they do the some camp earlier what you used to do i am talking about not this generation i am talking about some other other um, manufacturing area also everything is nowadays online but uh, earlier we used to do some field visit and all so first what you used to do some people from the company representative they wanted to sell their product so they will start the campaign so in the campaign they will promote their product when they will do the campaign many people will show interest that uh, some other company they want to use their product so now they become the leads okay they could be the future people who could buy their products so those people who wanted to interested in their product they become lead now many of them will buy their products many of them might, might not so they became some uh, thing in salesforce called account contacts etc so after buying the product they again need the service from the company so this customer interaction the sales process the service process this whole thing happens in crm that's why it called customer relationship management so this whole process can be done in salesforce using different salesforce app it could be sales app it could be service app it could be marketing app so many other things are there okay so salesforce started as a crm tool initially but later on if we talk about nowadays salesforce is everywhere it's not only in the crm part it beyond crm crm where it started but nowadays it is providing everywhere they are in health uh, health industry so they uh, introduce health cloud they are in community so they introduce experience cloud um, so many sector are there right now salesforce is uh, doing this but they started as a crm tool and this is still uh i can say it's still the best crm tool right now in the market but there are nowadays they have competitors from microsoft or aws okay so uh into an adobe cloud so these are the close competitor of salesforce okay <clears throat> so now let's talk about the architecture of the salesforce what is multi-tenant architecture so you can think this diagram uh, and understand why what is multi-tenant architecture and how it is there in the salesforce so the concept of multi-tenant architecture is very simple so suppose you are staying in a uh, multi like there yeah, many people are staying in the same house under the same house okay uh, like not uh, like people are not having their own house they are staying in a big house and uh, they have separate rooms okay kind of that that share kind of thing so in that case uh, everything is shared resource right from water supply to some other thing everything is shared so there could be a problem suppose people who is in the top floor and people who is in the uh, ground floor they have different flow of things right uh, if we think about like water supply issue the people who is in the top they will get the less speed people who is in the bottom they get the more speed so similar thing happens in salesforce okay like not in salesforce similar thing happens in many application that uh, people having the more internet speed they get the more resource people having the less internet speed they get the less resource so to avoid this kind of situation salesforce introduces this multi-tenant architecture so what happens here Salesforce resources are very limited for particular user. Okay, so you can check the image. They have instance A, instance B. The instance A is nothing but one Salesforce org. B is another Salesforce org, and if these are used by multiple people. So instance A is used by maybe three or five people. Okay, they are using Salesforce schema data configuration. So at same point of time, 
every people should get equally distributed resources like schema data or configuration so if you want to create some object or field in salesforce i will come to that part what is object or field so everything has some limit beyond that limit no user can go so everything is shared in this whole multi-tenant architecture so that is a good thing by the salesforce so that everyone uh, has been shared equally okay so there is no distinguish between different user uh, everything is on based on uh, the limit so this is not uh, this limit part is not that much important uh, being an admin uh, maybe three or four cases you just need to remember what is the limit because the limit is quite high for admin part but whenever you move to development part maybe few years this limit is very very much important because uh, while you writing a code in certain scenario if you if it breaks the limit immediately they will get some error so admin you will not get that kind of thing because admin is a point and click tool if any error is coming just checking the error will, you will understand but uh, not happen for the dev so uh, when you learn coding that time it is important to maintain the limit so this limit is called governal limit by salesforce okay so i already discussed what is crm i can understand that uh, using sales and services using phone call meeting and email they are basically promoting their product or providing service and what are the areas sales marketing support support means service 